So we're going to close the conference uh, with two quick things. We're going to have a speed round by the Board of Directors. I want to invite ARF Board of Directors up to join me on the stage. And uh, we're going to do a quick pass the mic. Um, Jeffrey, let's see, Bruce, Jane. And, uh, and we're going to speak about, we're going to stand and deliver, all right? So we're going to, all, we're going to do this standing, and everybody's going to be invited to kind of quickly um, raise the energy level so we all go out in a big rally. Uh, we collaborate, invest, and do, and we, uh, and we stand and deliver. What, what inspired and delighted you? <laughs> what, <laughs> what inspired and delighted you most? Um, what do you feel that we need to do next and most urgently for the industry? And what would you like to see the next time we get together in January? So we'll give ourselves a, a couple months here. So, Brad. Oh, I had to go first. Take I thought I was way. sitting over here, so I didn't have to go first. <laughs> um, so, we that way. so uh, I guess for us, like, uh, you know, you look at the, the last presentation from, um, from Will and Young Young, like the whole idea of focusing on lift and incremental value that's coming from advertising. Uh, is kind of where we really need this room to participate uh, because it's it's so easy to to always say oh well here's how much lift ended up happening um, and when it's not like the incremental lift that comes from it it makes the the publisher look good but it actually is not doing a service to the advertisers so that's one big piece I think the other thing is mobile uh, so it, it take it has taken us. So I've been in the industry since what ninety eight. So it's taken us about you know seventeen ish years to get desktop down. Uh, and now just as we're kind of getting desktop, getting some standards there, we're now uh, mobile is the thing that really matters. And if it takes us like another seventeen years to get mobile down, by the time we figure that out, everybody's going to be wearing like virtual reality headsets, and that's going to be irrelevant. And so how can we as a measurement industry kind of push things faster and faster, uh, particularly in the mobile environment? All right, so from a publisher to an advertiser, John. All right, uh, hi, John Waltower with uh, United Health Group. Uh, I was really inspired yesterday by um, a, a matrix and having some criteria on um, sifting through the different metrics that you had, and, and one of them was, uh, one of the criteria was focused on, on growth, actionable growth, and so I think if there's just two things as the world changes between now and the next 15 months and 15 years, Two things won't change. We'll have different business models. Business models will evolve. We stay focused on what's most actionable. That'll be key. And the second is, and I'd love to hear more about it, is just focusing on our end users and our consumers. Because we have really important um, products to sell. When you're on the client side, the advertiser side, you really believe in the products. And so the work that everyone does in this room to get those messages out is, uh, is critically important. So we need the whole industry to, uh, to help uh, serve our missions. Terrific. Jane, let's hear from the industry. <laughs> Uh, well, listen, I had to actually write this down so I would remember this from yesterday. Um, what, you know, it's so impressive to see all the energy and all the solutions and all the ideas and all the innovations that are coming forward in the industry. As researchers, we have the most impact when we um, have business sense, so we understand the business implications of whatever it is that we're working on and uh, tie it into those kinds of decisions that are being made. Um, when we use whole brain thinking rather than sort of our self-referential geeky kind of language and terms that we all get into. Um, and when we have the ability to turn these findings into stories that have impact, you know, you can see the impact of culture and uh, the, how, how stories have such impact in the different cultures that we all work in. So anyway, that's what struck with me the most, aside from the fact that I don't know quite, I think I'm going to be glad to retire when we have to be measuring um, moments and micro moments um, from a consumer-centric point of view, 24-7, real time. Um, I'm glad we'll have some young pros around to, to work on that. All right, great. So uh, how about a, a solutions provider, the new age? The new age. New age what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, what, what, what continues to occur to me is that, that the pace of change, I think, is make, makes precision a fool's pursuit. Um, I think things are moving so fast, and there are always new and better ways of doing things that increasingly from uh, an effectiveness and a measurement perspective, triangulating on truth is an ever important skill. And I think that places far more importance on the need to develop organizational credibility 
in terms of how you can get right enough to get a decision made and move forward without getting bogged down in the search for precision or looking for a silver bullet. That is what just continues to resonate with me. Terrific. Bruce, do you agree with that or do you have another point of view? Well, what really struck me uh, about this uh, conference was really sort of three broad themes. And the biggest one I felt was sort of the idea of using data. And I think Tim Prizik of uh, uh, Twitter really sort of hit that when uh, using, because the whole point I think of research is getting at the truth. And there were sort of three ways that we talked about getting at truth. One was data to behavior to truth. And that's what uh, Tim was getting at. I think we saw some traditional methods and approaches. I think the folks from uh, ESPN was a, a really great uh, way of sort of, of talking about using um, some interesting but sort of uh, um, uh, a research focused way. And then the whole idea of culture, culture expressing truth, uh, which came from the folks uh, at Taco Bell and, and others. Although there was, an, there was definitely an interaction between all of this, because I think you, you could look at what ESPN was talking about, and although they were talking about using research, it really was talking about the sports culture of what that value, value gives. Um, and I thought that, um, that um, one thing that was a little bit of a crack in the cement here that we uh, we'll need to pay more attention to, particularly as we move into the world of, of data. And that was the biggest theme, I think, here, is quality. There were a couple people asking about this. How do you clean data? How you work with, how you work with data? Google called it out, uh, uh, as well as some others um, uh, from the floor. And I know in my company, we spend a lot of time washing and cleaning and massaging uh, the data that we get. So I think that's something that uh, we'll have to take a look at at the ARF which is in this world of big data, the world of census data, how do we make sure that we're being as careful and clean with it uh, and true with it as possible? All right, so I know we're all worried about washing and cleaning our jeans and saving water at the same time. Barb, let's hear from you. Okay, you don't need to wash your jeans all the time. <laughs> By the way, there's a drought in California. Save the water, please. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I think what hits me is the level of granularity that you see in these various presentations and how deep you can go and how specific you can go. And honestly, does anyone find that overwhelming at all in the room? Okay, so I can find it overwhelming. And so coming from probably the oldest brand, I'm going to guess, in the entire room. So is any, any brand over 160 years old in the room? Okay. So I think what's really important is to step back and think about who your consumer is and what your brand is about and what the strategy is for your brand and think about that big overview and how all of these things enable that. I think the uh, Taco Bell presentation was really good. That to me was something that really gets at who your consumer is and really hits on a chord with those consumers and gets them excited. Lots of different vehicles out there to reach these folks. So that's just one thing I think we all need to keep in mind as well. Fabulous. Um, all right, so we had a little debate the other day, and I think you got the last word, so I think this time you're going to get the last word, so all right, here you go. Um, I, I, I really like the parts where we were very brand focused. I thought um, Pereira, and ad focus, I thought Pereira yesterday morning, it was great to see some creative and why he did it and sort of tied into the strategy and what they were trying to do. I like the Taco Bell stuff for the, the same reason. I do think sometimes we get a little too much insider baseball because we're really into all the little intricacies. I would, I do think there'd be advantages to bring some outside perspective sometimes on how technology like, you know, here like Palantir and government and threat detection for the government and so we can find some things that are adjacent we can bring into our industry, not just what we do. And um, my one little pet peeve I have is that for an industry that is, really focusing on becoming more data-driven, evidence-based, more behavioral, you know, trying to leave sort of classic demographics behind. I found it somewhat ironic that there must have been four significant parts of the presentation where we were totally classifying millennials as millennials and kept talking about them as millennials and these millennials. And, you know, I mean, Dave Poltrack for decades has been, <laughs> so I think it's ridiculous that we can assume that we actually understand people because of this age, you know, age gender band they happen to represent any more than any of us are. Um. Well, besides just hearing that I don't have to wash my jeans, that was a pretty major <laughs> insight. That's totally, I'm going to take that home. That's, I, so I never have to wash them or, or just occasionally? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, you know, 
Tim Perzik was on my team. Um, I hadn't seen his presentation, but basically I heard him pretty loud and clear that uh, not being able to have the skills to extract data and to deal with unstructured data puts my career at risk because I don't understand uh, some of the things that he's doing and his team are doing. And I definitely took that away in terms of just what type of skills that I have to think about to upgrade um, for, for my career. Fabulous. Thank you all so very much. Um, so just you might as well stay up here. It's just going to be two more minutes. Yeah, let's have a round of applause for the, the Air Board of Directors. Um, okay, so um, I, liked, I like to close kind of with this call to action. I think PJ said, think like a marketer, behave like an entertainer, and move like a tech startup. So that's a kind of how should we be, right? And then, uh, and then Colin uh, and, your, and your compatriot from Taco Bell really inspired us this afternoon by saying, uh, at noon, uh, by saying transcend the category, find an enemy, um, act like a fan, uh, not a corporation. I love that one. Uh, make small bets and then fail fast, fail smart. Uh, often, and there were more fails floating around in there, right? All right, so those are big emotional words, and um, there's there's the biggest call to action I can ever Im imagine or remember, and, and I always think of these events. You come for two days, and you go home completely inspired, but it always helps me to think of, like, what are one or two things you're going to do differently when you go back to your desk, and somebody's going to see, and they're going to say, hey, what'd you do for two days? And it's like, hmm, really good question. So that's why I like to close with these ideas and just kind of inspire people to think about, hey, Hey, what are you going to do next? Um, so very grateful. I want to give a round of applause to Facebook, please, everyone. Brad, Daniel, Jesse, Fred, uh, DJ, uh, and many, many, many others. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I want to give a round of applause to all the speakers. So that was, thank you so very much. Can't have a conference without all the speakers. I want the ARF folks, Rachel is standing over here. She did a fabulous job pulling the program together. <laughs> Invite the rest of the ARF team to stand. Some of them are getting ready for the next, our next little chapter. Michael's in the back. Um, Suzette. Um, so let's give the ARF team a round of applause. Let's give Gail a round of applause. Uh, Okay, and then finally, last but not least, we really want to thank our sponsors because, uh, as I started saying when I really figured out this ARF business model, somebody's got to help pay for the wine. So let's give them a big round of applause. And then we just send you off in style, and I'm super proud. We've ended like one minute before time, which is a lot harder than you think it is, and uh, for a lot of reasons, and, uh, and at 3 o'clock instead of, you know, 7, still talking about analytics. So um, thank you all so very much.